The glens, nine glacial valleys molded in the ice age, cutting their way through the Antrim Mountains towards the Irish Sea. Situated in the northeast of Northern Ireland, they were once part of the ancient kingdom of Dalriada that included parts of Scotland, often visible just across the water. The kingdom is no more, but many of its myths and traditions survive. Ah! Told across four seasons, this is the story of moors and farmland, forests and rivers, of a proud people fighting to preserve their way of life. It's summer, a time for the glens to celebrate and show off their beauty. Spring has been difficult, but now COVID-19 restrictions are beginning to ease. Gardeners at Glenarm are getting ready for summer visitors, and tourists are tentatively returning to the beaches. Away from the bustle in hidden corners of the uplands, Curdle call as they watch over their young. In the coastal village of Cushendall, Rory Oak, Hurling and Camogie teams will soon begin a shortened season. I would like the head like a wee tiny bit bigger. Mine is a wee bit too heavy. Orla and Amy are celebrating their comeback with some new hurls. We didn't actually think Camogie would happen, but thankfully, hopefully, that championship will happen this year and we are preparing well for it. In Carnlock, this will be the first summer season for Robert and Tiffany's Cafe. Our till is broken this weekend, which isn't great, but we're, we're managing. It was always in our intention to open light during the summer because it can be such a bustling little village. And we've decided to try it out this weekend that coincides with the return of the caravanners. It's nice to kind of feel like we're kind of ramping up into hopefully a bit of a busy summer season. We had our first guests in about yeah, 10 a.m. this morning, and then it's kind of just been a slow trickle all, all day. It's absolutely brilliant. Three months of the season we've wasted. So it's great to be back down around the glens. On the Devlin's farm in Glenshesk, Carol is taking bedding and supplies to their shepherd's hut. Perched on the side of Knockled Mountain, it is now open to tourists. This weekend is their first summer booking. It's in the first ordnance survey map from 1830. It wasn't a dwelling house or anything, it was just, it was a shelter. And this is where they slept and then went out and checked the sheep that would have been in the fields out around. But no electricity, just switch off from the outside world. Across from Glenshesk, on the McBride's farm at Fairhead, Jess is still training. Today's task is to bring sheep back from the cliffs to the farm. Get a drink, Jess. Will you just try and get her to go for a drink before we start a big move, so she's not dehydrated halfway through it sort of thing. And now we're good to go. Stay there. Stay. Stay. Yes, hello. Bye bye. I'll do. Jess is coming on well. She doesn't seem to have a middle gear, to be fair, on her. She just goes 100 miles an hour the whole time. Stay there. Stay. Stay. Today, Sean and Jared are shearing, and extended family have been roped in to help. I suppose on a day like that, there, you'd love to get your. Take the t shirt off and everything to you as well, you think. The weather for it. The weather for it. Tops off. <laughs> In Glenshesk, the Devlins are also shearing. Although these days, 
Frank leaves most of it to his son, Owen. Because of all the downturn and all sorts of industry this year, it's worth very little. <coughs> About 30p for some of those places, probably as much as we're going to get. It's not for the cost. With the hot weather and flies, uh, there's a real risk of fly strikes, so you just need to get them off. The sheep, uh, the sheep have a hair cup where I have this year. That's the most important thing for shearing. <laughs> Music speaker. But it's my wee brother, so I need to keep it clean and put it in this bag. Because he doesn't know I always take it. There we go. They're, these boys are going to work harder than I because the music's on place. A few miles away, the sea cliffs of Rathlin Island are also buzzing with activity. RSPBNI's Westlight Seabird Centre is closed to visitors, so Richard Else has the annual spectacle of the breeding season all to himself. The seabird colony here, a lot of people know it for the puffins, but the vast majority are guillemots and razorbills. All of the birds crowded onto the top, that's pretty much all guillemots, which are far and away the most numerous species here. They're absolutely shoulder to shoulder with all of the neighbours, which means that should a predator like a raven or a gull arrive, it's very difficult for it to get through that great big crowd of pointed beaks. And the puffins have got a bit of a reputation here for being incredibly punctual. So for the previous three years, we had our first puffin sighting on the exact same date every year, the 27th of March. And then this year, because it was a leap year, they might come a day earlier, and sure enough, we came down here on the 26th of March and there was the first couple of puffins there in the colony, exactly as predicted. Most of these species, in many cases, they'll come back to the exact same ledge or same burrow year after year. A lot of them are very long-lived birds as well, so they might be coming back here to the same spot for several decades, potentially. across the sea on Fairhead. It's rock climbers who inhabit the cliffs. Climbers like Claire Sheridan and her husband, Calvin Torrens, who have mapped out many of the routes here. Climbing routes that are regarded as some of the best and most challenging in the world. Across in Bally Castle, a dedicated band of locals prefer the thrill of water to sheer rock. There were the mornings in December and January where you were scraping the ice off the car and, and there was the sand was crunching with frost and still we went in for maybe just a few minutes. If we could meet just, you know, straight in front of us and swim around for a little bit and then whoever wants to branch off can do that after a few minutes. I am not from here, I'm from the States, but have lived in Valley Castle for about three years. And I just didn't think I would like swimming in cold water. I just thought that would that sounded miserable to me. Um, somebody explained if you just wait it out for about two minutes, then you, your body starts to warm itself up. You just feel better and then you start feeling amazing. Apparently this is the, the coldest water on the island of Ireland, <laughs> so we've heard. And yet we get in here every morning with our swimsuits on and we just love it. A 
Along the beach, artist Deidre Kinney is hunting for treasure. It's not glass, but it's a nice little piece. All sorts of things wash up here that she will then incorporate into her work. If I get a bit of Bally Castle glass, that'd be very lucky. Shells, maybe the odd bit of driftwood, anything that looks a wee bit interesting. When there's been a bit of a swell on, it gets the stuff that's been hidden under the sand, it gives a wee sift and gets it up to the surface. Oh, now this is a lovely piece of what's known locally as Bally Castle glass. So it's got a particular balloonness and a, a, a slight opaqueness to it. There was a, a glass factory in the 1700s, I think, just over on what they called Glass Island and I'm sure in Bally Castle. They made green bottle glass and they also made plate glass for windows. So this would have been a byproduct of the process. So that, I mean, that's going on for 300 years old, that little piece. And to me, that's, that's a little gem of a find. And it's lovely to be able to put that into a special piece for somebody. It actually matches the colour of the sea today. Grey brooding skies and gentle rains are as much a part of a glen summer as the warming sun, and just as important. At Glenarm Castle, the walled gardens are a riot of colour. Today, they are setting up for Dalfest Music Festival overseen by estate manager Adrian Morrow. This year's event will be closed to the public and streamed online. Our um, host is Stephen Mulhern, so he's flying over from, from England. And uh, Sandra Burke is our headliner. So, or Alexander Burke, sorry, Alexander Burke. So, uh, if you look out the front, we've got sheep this year for an audience. Well, I'll bet you it's the first time Alexander Burke has performed to uh, 300 U's. <laughs> because they're going to do 11 hours of broadcasting, I assume that's why they need all these, these rolls and rolls of cable. Well, you'd think there's as much cable here as we're going to stick a cable out to every television in the country. <laughs> there's miles of cable in here. The most crucial cable, though, is the one that links the event to the outside world through the castle home internet of Lord Dunluce, the son of the 14th Earl of Antrim. Here we go. And that's that. The live feed, the live link. Oh, if this works, it'll be a merit. I don't know how to, to stream all that out there. Well, that will let you know how we got on with this internet. OK. Right, all right. Lord and Lewis is in the middle of a, a, a conference call. And the, the, the connection, he says, has dropped off. <laughs> our first our first, <laughs> our internet has uh, dropped off, failed completely, uh, just out of the blue like that, before we even got the plug in. <laughs> so uh, there's the first hack up already. Back on. What was wrong? What? What was wrong? Uh, I was talking to too many people. Are we going to do that tomorrow? Maybe. <laughs> Up the coast from Glen Arm and Cushendall, it's finally Rory Oak Camogie team's first league match of the season. It's the moment Orla and Amy have been waiting for, despite the new COVID-19 restrictions. You have to come ready, so you get changed in your car and stuff. There's no changing room crack, there's no talking to your peers at the start or anything. It's literally you're on the pitch, you do your warm up, and that's it. I normally do get a wee bit nervous, like I find like if I'm eating my dinner before a match or that, you would 
a few wee jitters, but not too bad. Normally, when you step out onto the pitch and do your warm up, the nerves kind of disappear and you get focused then. Tonight's opponents are Dunloy, one of the teams they need to beat if they have any chance of the championship. No matter what age group they are, seniors and hurlers and everything, they try to create the space here. You work harder and then you see when you scan for a tackle, yes. everybody has to scan. Okay, we need to be strong, 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 strong. Give it your all today. That's all we ask. Right, girls, there's not much more inside that. Yeah, let's go, girls. It's half time, and the teams are neck and neck. We know where the ball's going. We have to believe in ourselves. This is where we do it. This is where we set the mark for the championship. We do not look back what has happened in the first half. We are going forward, right? Hurling is a massive part of Cushendall, but within the past couple of years, the club have actually started back in the Camogie Club as well. It seems to be taken more professionally than it was before. We've been quite a young team, and we've been building and adding some younger players into it. Everyone wants it, even around the community, all believe that we will have a championship in us. Now we've set the standard, that's what we are. We're going to get faster and quicker. We're going to make the ball stick. Get hard, get fight, get everything. We won by eight points, I think. So it's good to get a win, especially by that margin. So, but at the end of the day, it's only two points in the league, and we have a long season ahead. It's the day of Galfest at Glenarm. In a couple of hours, they go live. Can't help keep logging up the Glen to see when the cars is coming. Holding a festival with no people, it's uh, madness, absolutely madness. And then we're all dependent. We're dependent on that wee toy wire there. That's it right there. <laughs> All the technology guys tell me if I keep an eye on that screen here, that'll let us know that uh, everything's flowing the way it's supposed to be. Three. Mm. Ladies, thank you so much. And now, Nathan Carter! At night, I get lost on and I, I get lost on the way that you look at me when you're trying not to look at me. I'm all going crazy. What do you dream about at night? Are you losing sleep? What's on your mind? When you close your eyes, you see me. When I close my eyes, I'm guaranteed to see you. Away from the action in Glendun, John McCauley is out on his farm doing maintenance on Ronan's Way. The track is named after his son Ronan, who came up with the idea of building a public footpath on the farm. He died suddenly four years ago, before the path was completed. He was 38. Uh, today we're going to hang a gate here because that gate is too small and it's done anyhow. So we're going to hang another gate on it. This was Ronan's project. He had wished that the general public would be able to walk through it and uh, see all the views. Since we opened back up at the lockdown, it has been extremely busy. I suppose people are glad to get back out again. So being silly, we didn't take water up with us. We'll have to 
use this to grab it. If you put your hand in that there, do you feel that how cold that water is? No matter how warm the weather is. Now, just out of interest, I sent a sample of it away. Most springs, there's various uh, things in them. And that came back totally clear. Absolutely pure water. It's August. The villages and towns that hug the Glen's coastline are making the best of the season. Flat white. Cheers. As tourists do their best to grab a holiday as safely as possible. All right, Jim. What are we painting? Away from the coasts, on the high moors of Glenwerry, the heather is in flower. Here, there is excitement of a different kind, the annual survey of grouse numbers on the moor. This entire green outside doesn't seem to have done well this year, just due to heather beetle and predation and stuff like that, I think, so. All year, gamekeeper Alex Rogers has been managing the habitat and protecting nests from predators. Over the next few days, with the help of specially trained dogs, he will find out if it's worked. So these lads are mostly from like the, the trialing community. And we've got one, two, three, four, about six, six, seven lads here, all with dogs and good dogs as well. So uh, I want to get these lads in now because I'm not 100% sure on how well this has done this year. Oh, there we go. It's not a bad start. Okay. That's a good brood down there. Get him. Big brood there, look. One, two, three, four, five. Just a whole lot exploded. I uh, couldn't believe it. I was like this trying to count them. I couldn't. <laughs> I, I, I thought about 10, he said about 12. Four. Right. And then a single and a single. So this piece of ground is definitely up from last year. I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of it done and so far, brilliant count, yeah, I couldn't be happier. It's also been a successful summer at Tivera Community Allotments in Cushendall. You just can pick them stick out of the, the thing, you know. There we want seed boy. There you just, you just, you just take them. Sit. Lovely and crunchy. A long hot spring followed by rain has left everyone's plots bursting with produce. I'll get you a turn up. You can take it home with you. There you are. It's not too bad that one. It's not that big, but it's came well. Broccoli's done very well, like, so it is. Just the right kind of broccoli you get in. <laughs> I'm happy enough this stuff is grown. It's been a very strange summer for us. Most of our fundraising has unfortunately had to be stopped with, with regard to COVID, but it's a brilliant crop this year, and I think because people have had a lot more time, they've been up a lot more and looking after it a wee bit more. There's a lot of competition and see who's got the best crop, and Robert only thinks he's an expert. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the real good time now when you get walking around and see everything growing. Once you've all the weeds done, you just walk about and lie over the fence and look at them. <laughs> you know, I like, that's the bit I like now, is just looking in at them, everything growing well. Oh, that's what place is sitting there, she can just... Some of it's bent. Keeps you sane. Yeah. So you can't get out to the pub or nothing now, sure. But you could spend all day up here, you could make it a nice warm weather, like. Just sitting, yarn, look at stuff. Just what everybody does.
summer is nearly over. And the caravanners at Carnlock will soon be returning home. The seabirds on Rathlin Island left weeks ago. Rain has washed away any sign that they were ever here. In her studio in Ballyvoy, Deidre is working on her beach paintings. On Glenarm Estate, the shorthorn beef cattle are already in calf, and trees are beginning to turn. So traditionally, if we went walking, this is somewhere where I would fall. <laughs> <laughs> on Ronan's Way in Glendun, John McCauley is enjoying a Sunday morning walk with his granddaughter Natalie and his late son's wife, Paula. The main thing, especially for Natalie, because she was so young with Ronan, it's important for her to remember that her daddy's always with her. Nice to be out and make the most of the views and feel that Ronan's with us at all times, because I know he is. Good girl, pull us up. Natalie, show us your Macaulay walk. It's instilled in Natalie. She's very much a Macaulay when it comes to kind of her love of the great outdoors. And I think for her, whenever she does go to Glendon, it's with her papa. So her and papa, that's their time to be together. Joan's kind of stepped into the shoes of Ronan and making sure that she has got that male role model, just helping her and guiding her and reminding her of, you know, the things that were important to Ronan. Uh, you know, it's lovely that the two, Natalie and her cousin Katie, so much love it. That would have been Ron's delight to see the two children uh, so much enjoying it. There you go. Run away! Run away! Ronan was the most unmaterialistic man. For him, it was all about making the most of nature. It was about being true to yourself. It was about being humble. It was about enjoying what's around you. It's beautiful, isn't it? Autumn is coming and the Glens have new stories to tell. Oh, she's coming on well, definitely. Well, well they lost with her. Big asset to the farm. But when I started with my father, uh, he said, there's a job for you here if you want it. And he said, there'll be some good years, and some not so good years. And that's more or less the way it is, like. So, here, come back. You're proud that they've enjoyed it so much and that you're sharing your land with them. Without a doubt, you know, the most beautiful place that you could ever wish to work on. That that's what'll go on. The the, the Belden will be here, that's the state will be here and another two, three hundred years' time. 